Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and Merry Christmas. I don't really know if Christmas Day is a good day to put out a YouTube video, but when I recorded today's video earlier in the week, I completely just didn't realise it would be going out on Christmas Day and I've just sat down to edit it and gone, oh, and I just thought it would be a bit weird if I didn't start the video by saying Merry Christmas. I hope you're having a great one and I really hope you enjoy today's little kind of walking tour. Hi folks and welcome back to the plot. We've had our big freeze and now we've had the big thaw and it's been a little while since we just did a bit of a, a walking tour. So today I thought I'd pop you on the gimbal and just take you around and we'll have a little look at how everything's going. I guess the question is how is it, how is it looking and if you ask me it, it could be a lot worse. I'm feeling okay. So I'll spin you around and we'll have a little look. Now I didn't really have too many crops in while we've been having this big cold snap stuff you can see this is field beans they look a bit like broad beans but they are a green manure so the idea was you know i had a lot of problems with stuff growing in these beds this year and i thought some green manure kind of fixing nitrogen digging it back into the soil in spring would really help to improve things i probably should have sown a lot more uh, i did have a kind of a late sowing over here and you can see all of this growth this is a really successful load of turnips and now they've frozen and thawed they should be quite sweet and tasty some of the other stuff not so successful some salad crops i did have a crop of spinach from here but this late into the season i'm just kind of being a bit lazy the idea is really to get most of this out now apart from the green manure i'm probably just going to mulch this with some cardboard just until spring um, just to kind of protect the soil from erosion keep it a little bit warmer in there you know just keep it nice prevent the weed growth all that all that good stuff that's what i normally do and it, it tends to work okay the leeks this year my leeks are generally always a bit small and it's because i plant them quite late i normally plant them after the potatoes but this year they are <laughs> they are really really small um i don't know if we're going to get much of a crop off these but come spring when it starts to warm up and they get a bit more sun on they might they might come a little bit better but <laughs> yeah a bit of a disappointing year for the leeks this year. I would like to generally just spend a bit of time now that we've had the thaw just going through this bed. It needs a good weed. I did a little bit before the, the freezing temperatures but once it was frozen that was it <laughs> and all the grasses just survived. I've got a lot of kind of cooch grass that comes up and it, it does really fine. In here it's looking a bit messy. We've got the sleepers for the greenhouse base obviously. Uh, lots of videos on that recently and in here We've got a load of mess. <laughs> it just looks like a mess, doesn't it? But that is all dead calendulas, and I've left those stems deliberately. Um, although it looks untidy, it's really good for wildlife, overwintering kind of little creepy crawlies, insects, caterpillars, spiders, lots of really good stuff. And just next door in the beds over, there is a lot more of that. You can see all of these kind of dead flowers. I've got lots of, um, what is that, bronze fennel, uh, verbena, uh, rudbeckia, all of these seed heads that are, you know, great fuel for birds, especially. I've seen a few little kind of sparrows and robins dotting around and just kind of nipping around and enjoying these and eating the insects that use them as well. This is incredible, lots of fever few has kind of withstood the frost. It's looking a little bit poorly, isn't it? It's not looking super healthy, but probably time for that to come out soon. But I'm just kind of letting all these beds rest now. And I know it looks a mess in this bed, but I think it's really good to just kind of let these go a little bit. Sometimes it's not just good for wildlife and biodiversity, but it's kind of good for yourself, <laughs> you know, not to have to be too worried about everything looking perfect and manicured. And I do get a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of interest from the neighbors asking me what I'm up to. So I think it's good to have some bits looking neat and then leave some for nature. In a more formal garden, you can kind of do this nice and easily on your borders. It's a little bit more difficult with an allotment. And I think sometimes it is just good to just let it go. Just let go, don't worry too much. Let me spin you around and we'll look in the greenhouse now where unfortunately <laughs> it's not looking great. Uh, do you remember I had some chili peppers I was hoping might just get through. <laughs> they had a few more peppers on them, green ones that are ready to ripen. And look at this, there's a little In here, there is a little hoverfly darting around. I'm gonna try and get a shot of it. Yeah, I got him. So that's a really, it's a nice sight. Uh, seeing something 
a little sign of life amongst all of these dead plants. And it's quite funny, I'm always talking about insects and biodiversity and it's rare that I ever, that we ever actually get to see them on camera. They're so difficult, they're quite elusive. That's why a lot of people don't kind of value them, you know, because they're hard to see. But yeah, these chili plants, they are dead and gone. So greenhouse looking a little bit sad and there is plenty in here for me to clear out. I've got my tea today. Of course, uh, all the quad grow pots and everything, you know, that's still, <laughs> still to come out because I'm focusing today on the new greenhouse. And we've got one little nice weather day. <laughs> and then we've got literally like a fortnight of rain. So I'm gonna get in today, start digging around all these foundations and filling them with soil. Not soil, stones. <laughs> <laughs> dig it all out to fill it with more soil. That wouldn't be very good, would it? Rest of the plot, like I say, it's not looking amazing, but there's no, there's nothing I'm really concerned about. This strawberry bed does need a lot of work. <laughs> Strawberries have just been bunged in, but they are surviving. And I've got some kind of runners going in the greenhouse as well. All the stains in there. Luckily, I was a little bit worried about all my glass, you see, where we had all this ice. A little bit worried that it might have cracked. That can happen in the ice, especially where it's just on the floor. But, touch wood, fingers crossed, it seems fine. The L bed needing a little bit of work. Tree cabbage has survived. I've not talked about this very much and I've not been very good at harvesting this. And when we had lots of wind recently, <laughs> actually it was that, the, the big sheet of um, rotting MDF or um, OSB, whatever you want to call it, got deposited on this tree cabbage and it's bounced back, it survived. Could be, <laughs> could be looking a little healthier, but all things considered, got quite lucky with that. And now it's coming into its second season, I'm hoping we'll be able to crop from that kind of in March. This bed should have loads more field beans and I sowed these kind of, I think, late October. I knew it was a little bit late. Um, but I just wanted to see if they would come up and unfortunately they have not. But next door, this is another one of the problem beds. I had lots of, lots of stuff in here that just really did not want to grow. And in terms of aspect, this is, a, this is a much better bed. This should be a nice healthy bed full of growth. The one at the top gets a lot of shade, really cold. You, I saw that especially in the, the kind of the freezing temperatures, the frost really stuck around up there. But down here, the brassicas and this bed, they should be, they should be the good ones. You know, these should be supercharged. I'm hoping all this green manure will help a little bit. And let's have a little look at the brassicas and the cabbages. Now, not too long ago, I was saying that I was really disappointed with this brassica patch and most of the cabbages were looking rubbish and I probably wasn't gonna have any come through, but They've survived the frost. They're looking just as healthy as ever, which <laughs> to be fair, isn't that healthy. We had one really nice cabbage out of here and there's some in there that have kind of hearted up and they're small little cabbages. I'm going to be able to take a couple for Christmas dinner, which I am really happy about. They're not going to win any prizes, <laughs> but I managed to get a few through until Christmas, which is what I was really hoping to do. And you know, that's just, that's a great feeling, isn't it? On Christmas day, when you can provide a little bit of homegrown food. The purple spring broccoli, the one plant I've got is looking really, really good in here. And as well, some of the seedlings that you saw me plant a little while back that were just a wing and a prayer, let's see what happens. Well, these have mostly survived. You can see they've not done much since I planted them, but with the temperatures we've had, I don't think that's anything to be surprised about. And there's kind of three or four that are looking quite healthy. Some of the smaller ones, unfortunately, didn't make it which is not a surprise. Look at these. I mean, <laughs> if those grow, then, you know, <laughs> they are some real warriors, but uh, pretty happy with these, all things considered. And the brassica bed, despite getting munched on caterpillars very early on in the year, it's kind of bounced back a little bit, a little bit. One thing that I am still waiting to hear about, and I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, a mixture of nervous and excited about, is the second plot. I'm very due soon hopefully to be getting a second allotment plot and I've got loads of really really exciting plans but for now I'm gonna work on <laughs> what's actually in front of me and get digging on here and then I'm gonna show you what I've been up to kind of a few hours later and talk to you a little bit about my new year's gardening resolution as well because <laughs> there's one thing I really want to start focusing on I'll see you in a few hours okay so 
little bit of time later and actually it wasn't as difficult as I was expecting it might be. I've got... Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. Jess has very kindly come and brought me the spirit level, which I of course forgot and it's quite important for this next part. The good thing about this is the trench doesn't have to be too... Why are you laughing? I can literally just... I'm not, I can I'm see you smiling. <laughs> Jess, Jess is very rarely on the channel for this exact reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, ch the trench doesn't have to be perfectly level because the next step is basically filling this with stones. The issue is it's not like shingle, they're quite big stones. So getting it level for the sleeper that way is going to be fine, but each brick individually being level is going to be the tricky bit. But um, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> this is very hard work. <laughs> I think I'm probably done with this for the day, which means I can tell you about my little New Year's resolution. <sighs> wow. Wow, that is tough. So, New Year's resolution. Oh, the first thing, I meant to start the video by saying a massive thank you uh, for two things. Firstly, the response to my last video, which was really, really lovely. I urge you, if you're, if you're watching this, but you didn't watch last week's episode, which is, um, it's all about kind of my relationship with the garden. And I think the, the biggest bit of advice I have to give to anyone starting a garden, or even if you've been gardening for years, to just kind of stop and take a little bit of time. And the other, the other thing to say thank you for is um, all the support that I've had through Kofi over the last few months. It's like a little kind of donation website where if you've been enjoying the videos for a little while, you can send me kind of five, 10 pounds for a packet of seeds, or a cup of coffee or something like that. And thank you to everyone who has done that. It, it, it's blown me away actually, even just, you know, people who give kind of three, five pounds here and there. It, it means so much that people enjoy my videos enough you know, that it means enough to that. Anyway, um, the thing I want to say thank you for is I put in my 2023 seed order and I haven't had to pay a penny. It has all been paid for by the Kofi supporters. So thank you so, so much. But New Year's resolution, yes, it is. Well, it's all, it's all about this tea recently. It's like the, the main character on the channel isn't me, it's cups of tea. Hmm. But my resolution is Every time I finish work at the allotment, what I normally do, I finish what I'm doing, pack up the tools pretty much as quick as I can, um, and I'm in a rush to get home. Um, and normally that's because dinner's waiting, or Jess is cooking, or just, you know, we miss each other, or we haven't seen each other all day, or whatever. So I always down tools and go. I finish what I'm doing and I go. <laughs> and my resolution is to stop doing that. And at the end of every day at the allotment, to give myself 10 minutes, either with a cup of tea or just whatever, just sit, rest and enjoy the space. And that all links to what I said in last week's episode. But that's it for today. I'm going to be exhausted <laughs> for a few days after smashing all those stones, I think. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Oh, you cannot beat tea after hard work.